Welcome back to the competition studio at the International Paderewski Piano Competition. I'm Jared Dunn, and I'm joined here today with, by two competitors from the second stage, uh, Georgi Vasilev from Bulgaria and Noah Zhu from the UK. Uh, and we're going to talk about their impressions from the second stage. So I'd love to ask right away uh, about how you felt about your second stage recitals. We can start with Georgi. Yeah. Actually, I expected the second stage would be easier, like as we have already played on the first stage mm -hmm. we, we know the, the the atmosphere and the instrument but for me it was actually more difficult than the first stage it i needed a lot of more concentration and mm -hmm. uh, and rel relieving the pieces probably the repertoire was quite different than the first stage right uh, because you played all paderewski all paderewski yeah. yeah yeah and it was really quite dark, quite mel melancholical, mm -hmm. and uh, I think also that was that was a part of, of, of relieving it in slightly different manner than the first stage, but right. yeah, I can say that it, it was harder and it was mm -hmm. heavier than the first. And Noah? Um, for me, it felt it felt okay. It was a lot more comfortable in the longer time format than, mm -hmm. than it was in the first round, mainly because I just feel like it's a lot easier to give uh, an overall impression of right. your performance in the longer time format. Um, wasn't so happy about drawing in the morning, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> hey, you can't you can't really do anything about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be surprising for some people that you actually prefer performing within a longer time span. Why would that be? As for me, it's uh, the overall performance is is more of an impression that you want to give the audience mm -hmm. and. Personally, in a shorter time frame, when when something goes wrong, it kind of sticks with you a lot more. In the, in the longer time frame, um, it's just it feels a lot easier to me to kind of create an overall impression, which I'm just more comfortable with. Right. But do you agree? Because yeah, you're nodding I your head. You yeah, feel yeah. better with a longer program yeah, than just. Yeah, definitely. It feels more more like a normal recital, not like like an mm -hmm. audition or yeah uh, or a competition. It's is it something generally here? I mean, it's a big competition, and are you getting the feeling that you have the opportunity to really make an artistic statement and play concert, or does it feel like a competition? It feels a bit like both. I mean, probably in the morning, there weren't so many people watching, mm -hmm. so it, to me it kind of felt a bit like a competition, but at least there is more audience than, than what we'd normally get, even, right. even in a lot of big competitions. So. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it does feel more like a, more like a concert. Mm -hmm. Also, the longer the programs get, it just feels more and more like a recital. Yeah. And what about for you? Well, I also played also in the morning in the first stage, in, in the evening in, in the second. Right. Uh, so I don't know how to differ differentiate between the repertoire, the feeling of, of the repertoire and uh, feeling in morning and evening. Mm -hmm. so I, I'm not sure, actually. I felt it harder in the evening, but I yeah. think it was because of the repertoire and, uh, and the ha harder, pro just harder atmosphere of the works I played. We so it. rarely hear this Paderewski variations in Fugue. <laughs> uh, and I saw you right after you finished your recital. Um, how did you feel right as you left the stage and have finished this incredible Fugue? Well, there are, there are a couple of interesting things about, about that piece. One of these is, of course, it's, it's not often played. Uh, but um, anyway, it's, it's technically it's hard just because probably also the last the couple of uh, last variations are just really hard. We don't have any time to 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 rest between, and then mm -hmm. that awfully long fugue starts also without any 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 breaks in between. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I may say that's probably my favorite work, um, favorite piece. Uh, between all, all pieces of the competition, but really? also, yeah, also it, it felt a lot more harder than I mm -hmm. uh, expected. To Could be. you feel it sort of moment by moment going by? It's a very visceral, in the moment kind of feeling to play, but this piece is huge, so... Well, probably because it's, it's, it's a variation form mm -hmm. and it, it feels different, for example, for, for Sonata. Mm -hmm. uh, Bereski has also that, that wonderful, also E flat minor, uh, yeah. Sonata, uh, which is not not also we almost never hear it. Yeah, yeah. As the variations, I think variations are more like uh, easy, easy to to to, to grab than the, mm. the sonata, mm -hmm. uh, but probably more difficult than a concerto. So, mm -hmm. anyways, it, it's it, it's a wonderful work, quite quite autobi autobiographical. I, I may yeah. say actually, 
uh, he wrote a couple of, uh, wrote, not he, but uh, the, the lady who wrote his uh, memoirs. memoirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of sentences about, about the history of that work and right. when he, he wrote it, so, so it's definitely worth it. Just so we're reading. talking a lot about Paderewski, but we were talking just before we started the interview. You actually don't play a lot of Polish music, but you're here at a competition about a Polish composer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, the Paderewski competition, I've always looked at it as, as a hugely respected World Federation competition. Mm -hmm. It was probably one of the biggest events to happen this year. So, I mean, it was always a goal that I, I thought I would try and work towards. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, it doesn't require you to play that much extra stuff mm -hmm. just on top of your standard program. So actually, it's quite free, yeah. uh, which I do appreciate a lot. Did you enjoy learning Paderewski music? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I'd I'd say in a lot of competitions, you have just these required pieces and they're not fun. Yeah. <laughs> but Paderewski, actually, I, I, I think it's actually good music. So mm -hmm. in that regard, I don't mind dedicating that much time to learn it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like these these kind of short pieces that are still going to be useful for me yeah. in in a few months time after the competition's finished, I can still keep them as encores or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and in that regard, I definitely enjoyed the challenge of working with them. And when you make your recital program, I mean, it's clear with your program you were focusing on Paderewski in general. Uh, but in your case, you were putting Paderewski with other composers. Can you tell us how you grouped them? I mean, for this round, it was uh, it was always my intention to have. Uh, a significant work mm -hmm. of maybe 25 to up to 40 minutes maybe so uh, I took pictures in exhibition which was a big 31 minute work mm -hmm. um, and that was always going to be the core of my program right um, the smaller works um, were a little bit of an afterthought to be honest because mm -hmm. I was um, I wasn't sure if I was going to come here or or do Bizoni composition. Um, <laughs> so you were choosing between different programs no, and different so competitions. I, I, I was under the impression that I was going to do both because the live selection for Bizoni was around this period as well. Right. Um, but then I missed it because I had to fly here and it was the day later. So because I had to prepare a 20 minute program and then my rep kind of worked, I was planning mm. to, to play my Clementi Sinatra from the first round mm -hmm. uh, with, with the two etudes that I programmed in this round. Mm. Um, but then by the by the time I realized I could only do one, it was too late to change the yeah. program. But I mean, it, it wasn't, I, I feel like it didn't kind of take anything away from the overall impression. It probably showed a different side to my playing, right. which um, which was kind of complementary to the pictures, perhaps. And different competitions do that, right? They ask you to prepare certain pieces that are required, and then you have your own choice for some others. Yeah. Uh, and you were mentioning also about the Busoni and other competitions. Uh, how important is it to keep competing constantly and to go to different events like this? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not something that people in our position tend to enjoy, I think. <laughs> but Do you enjoy competing? <laughs> well, I may say I enjoy preparing for a competition. Maybe yes. not, not the same, the, the, the really competing part, but mm -hmm. the preparation is it's like, it's, the motivation is definitely another type of it mm -hmm. than, than normally, so so that that's nice, but... but. I tend to treat this as a, as a necessary evil, really, because, oh, yeah? I mean, there's, there's so many benefits to doing them, mm -hmm. and actually it forces us to work harder as well. Right. So, in that aspect, I, I would agree with that, the preparation mm -hmm. is a lot more, in t well, interesting than, yeah. than the actual performance itself because there's not much you can do once you're done. And yeah, and when I, I think you're right about the, the comment. I mean, there's so many benefits to it. Like right now we're waiting for the results, of course, so this is a, <laughs> a difficult time, right? I'm assuming you're wondering what's going to happen. Yeah, everything's out of our hands now. So. Yeah, uh, one of the questions I uh, have received most from different viewers around the world is how do you cope with this period? Of course, everyone knows the performance is stressful, but now you have to wait to find out what's going on. So what's going through your head while you're waiting to see what happens? I think I feel like calmer than while waiting the results and before the actual performance is, I don't know, for me the performances are the most difficult as energy-wise. Yes. Uh, just far part of, of the competition. Then, anyway, I play it already. So, it it's, if I pass or if I don't pass, it it, it stays the same. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, probably the, it's sad that someone would, would be able to play all these pieces which were pref uh, prepared also. Right. Probably that that's quite quite hard. But but anyway, I am happy with performing just already two rounds. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just. Preparing and hoping for, for the best, actually. Yeah. Also. 
Oh, yeah. for me, waiting is the worst part. Like, really? I, I get super, super jittery. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. So if you weren't sitting on a studio right now being observed by people all over the world, what would you be doing? I, I'd, be, I'd be pacing around, <laughs> probably like leg shaking. Right. The table. I mean, obviously, once you're done performing, there's, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. So, I mean, the hope for me is that I've, I've prepared a lot of program and obviously mm -hmm. The thing that I would would like above all is to actually get a chance to perform it, mm -hmm. um, because I mean it's it's a shame when you prepare how many hours of of music and yeah. then it gets cut short and <laughs> right and then who knows when you're going to play it next. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I tr I try and sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, the I, same. I, yeah. <laughs> I I try and I mean right now anyway I'm, I'm trying to enjoy myself as much as I can because. Mm -hmm. Who knows when this is when this trip is going to end, really? Right. So, <laughs> yeah. When you're entering a competition, so your mentality going into it is that you want to perform and you're excited about the opportunity to play for people. Yeah, definitely for me. But naturally, you hope for good results that the jury will recognize your playing and your efforts, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. For yeah, me, yeah. for me, like the trust because it, it was my first time choosing uh, piano for mm. for uh, such an event. And that was one of the one of the things which kept me focused in, in that okay, I'm not going to be nervous because I will just be happy that I may I have the opportunity to choose a piano, and that right. that was that was a wonderful part of, uh, of the whole. Did you yeah. pick the same pianos? Actually, off the top of my head, I don't um, remember. Which one did you take? Um, which was I, I took Steinway. Uh -huh. That was a really cool touch, though. Um, I mean, I've I've had the chance to choose between pianos before, but. I mean, not in this kind of stage where they give you four like top end instruments. And, right. And mm -hmm. that, that was that was super nice. Was it um, like when you were picking pianos? Did you think through? Okay, I've got to stick with this piano if I make it through each stage. So I've got to make a really good choice. Not for me. It was based on my first round repertoire. I wanted to pick something the piano that kind of felt the best for my first program. Right. Because if you if I was to pick a piano for my semi final and then and you can't predict that yeah. <laughs> exactly so I, I I kind of try and take every round as it comes and mm -hmm. I, mean, I was playing Norma so I was like which keyboard feels the best for me? right yeah uh, <laughs> and yeah. what about you quite the same actually quite the for same. the first round you yeah picked. well I played a couple of bars from from second round repertoire also uh, but but mainly the decision actually I think it it, it would be the same. Uh, Mm -hmm. If I also played on only only pieces from the second round, but anyway, it just felt felt more comfortable. I I just listened to my unconscious feeling, yeah. and then I decided that I will take that that piano which is most comfortable for that hole and that moment. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, good teachers tell their students when you play in a competition, don't play for the jury. Play what you really feel and be yourself. Do you feel that you got there on stage? Try to. <laughs> I mean, obviously, uh, the audience being there does help. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if the, the hall wasn't full for the earlier rounds, it definitely had a much bigger audience than I would have expected at another competition, maybe. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. And I, I tried, I, I, I realized that the jury is on the balcony upstairs, which sounds, I mean, I went up there to listen during the tryout, and it, it sounds quite different to yeah, it how does. it sounds at the back of the hall downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think they get a lot more than the people at the back of the hall right. on, on the ground floor. Definitely. So I tried to project a little bit more, mm -hmm. perhaps. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how the piano responded to that, with this particular instrument. But this is very important. You're talking the things that we do for normal concerts. Yeah. You know, we don't adjust to the audience, I, we adjust yeah. to the hall and to the I'd instrument. I normally try and, try and project as much as I can for right. a slightly bigger venue. Um, how it actually sounded in the end, who knows? <laughs> yeah. I, I can't hear myself. Do you listen but... to yourselves on the videos that they make and watch what you do? A, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, a, a couple of just seconds, not not more. Yeah, I get really? stressed. Yeah, yeah. You get stressed? Yeah. And what about you? Also? Also. Because yeah. it's so recent, right? Yeah, and and when when you've just performed and you listen to yourself on the stream, you can you can hear everywhere that you screwed up. And yeah, <laughs> everything right. that kind of sticks with you. It's like the smallest. This is very interesting that your mind. I mean, I know this from competing as well. If you watch back your performance within probably twenty four hours, your mind is still as critical mm -hmm. as you were just before you go on stage, hearing everything, and it's still very. Yeah. It's like electricity almost. Do you find that as well? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I won't, I'll try not to listen to other people as well. I'd, I'd mm. go back in like a, a month's time or something right. and then probably listen to every single performance across the, the entire Wow. Month. Normally is what I try and do just because it's interesting to see what other people played. Mm -hmm. And also 
I want to see if I was perhaps overreacting to something that I did or if, if like the overall impression is what I was going for. Because right. that's what you can actually take forward if you're going to play this repertoire again or mm -hmm. maybe someone else has some interesting ideas of something that you're planning to learn or have played as well. Mm -hmm. And what about you? When you watched back, how much could you watch? Well, I think I haven't watched uh, my competition videos from before if mm -hmm. they were left on, on YouTube. So I cannot say, well, well, sometimes, yeah, I listened. For example, I played the, the same sonata, same Beethoven sonata before in other event. So as I, I had a little bit difficult time just remembering and refreshing it mm -hmm. for, for just for myself, just a week before the competition. And then I listened to that recording from before and it, it helped me a lot, for example. But right. Usually I don't listen, I don't listen to to these recordings like in a hall. So. Mm -hmm. Because it's a totally different feeling when you play live and how the music happens right in front of you compared to listening to it yeah. after. Yeah, sometimes it's it's really easy actually to remember the feeling from, from being on stage, on that particular stage. Mm -hmm. I, I just sometimes uh, have the feeling that I'm playing somewhere and it sounds a bit like somewhere else I have played before. Right. And, and it gets really cozy if, if of course, the, the memory is, is nice. Uh, <laughs> right. If it's not, it's quite actually difficult. Do it? you remember, speaking of uh, the memories of playing, because uh, I watch you compete, and I know what it's like to be in the spotlight like that, uh, and I remember the stress. Uh, when you watch yourself, do you remember what it was like when you were on stage and the feeling of being at a competition, under pressure? Does that <laughs> occur to you? Sometimes, generally, the worst bit is like the waiting for like the hour before and then starting. Mm -hmm. I think once once you can get over the fact that you played your first couple minutes mm -hmm. and then you can kind of forget about the fact that there's actually people watching, mm -hmm. and you can kind of try and focus on what you want to do. You play for and, yourself and you. Yeah, and it, in my experience, if you can start well, it's normally okay after yes. that. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. and actually, you kind of backstage you start to second guess yourself memory wise as well and right. and, and your hands start to feel sweaty or cold or whatever mm -hmm. and used to th yeah. Th yeah. those feelings sure. kind of they just go away I think after the first couple minutes mm -hmm. and then muscle memory kind of takes you right and where do you go when you play do you, you think about emotions or do you try to stay in contact with what you're listening to all the time how do you process the stage I just uh, just before going out, I'm I'm trying just to, to 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 recreate that atmosphere. I I probably have been working in uh, in regard to before, mm -hmm. so that sometimes just uh, sometimes usually he helps me uh, yeah. a lot with it. But anyway, on the stage, uh, like no no, so it, it is usually the first couple of uh, minutes or even seconds just hard to 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 get into into that uh, yeah. play, special place everyone has. And then it, it gets easier. Right? The work just takes you or, yeah. uh, with, with it. I think the discussion is really uh, focusing on the fact that competitions really make you prepare in a very special way to be in this situation. And then on stage, uh, that it's actually possible to deliver something that feels personal to you and good on some level. <laughs> Do you feel good about your performances to an extent? <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel okay about you feel it. Okay? I'm, I'm not sure if I'd say good because, <laughs> I mean, we're still waiting. Right. Um, I'd say content, perhaps. Content? And how about you? Well, everyone would say that it's, it's, it's never like 100%. It's, it's always slightly yeah. slightly less. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I may say I, I feel quite comfortable with the yeah. details. So, yeah. So, uh, I want to say thank you for joining us today and having this discussion. It was Thanks very interesting. Us. And I, I wish I could extend it so that we could get over these jitters of waiting <laughs> by talking for longer. But um, I would like everyone to hear your Paderewski. Uh, so, in the break, uh, everyone, please stay with us. We're going to hear Georgi's Paderewski, The End of the Fugue. Uh, from Variations in Fugue. Uh, and if you want to hear Noah's performance, go ahead and follow Paderewski's YouTube. Uh, you played yesterday, is that right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a bit of a blur, isn't yeah. it? Yesterday was a long day. Yesterday, yeah. <laughs> yesterday morning, the first session of the second stage. Uh, Georgi and Noah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Let's have their performances now. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Competition Studio, and I'm delighted to welcome jury members Noriko Ogawa from Japan and Vanessa Latarsh from Great Britain. Uh, so I'd love to talk with you about your impressions of the competition so far and about judging in general. We were talking with the competitors uh, a moment ago about program construction, because all the programs are so different. Um, what, if, what are your impressions of the types of uh, programs you've been hearing? Well, shall I? Well, first, yeah. okay. <laughs> we both have probably some some things to say. Um, definitely, I think it's well. Of course, they have to play some Paderewski right. in this round or or in the first round, but definitely in this round. And then, of course, then we also have the for the next round we have the commission piece. So you have a couple of things that they have to. Mm -hmm. The rest of the things are completely free choice. And uh, I think with the with the um, idea of free choice comes, of course for you to play what you play your best and also how you're going to think creatively about putting pieces together, whether they work, whether you end on in a key and you start in another key, this kind right. of thing, colouring. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, length, programme length is very important and, mm -hmm. and the building how, you know, the, the major piece perhaps with other pieces around it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very much up to the competitors themselves to choose what they want to, to, to play, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we are looking at the whole artist, so we're trying to see what right. they're building. I don't know if you have anything to add, Nick. Well, it's, it's, it's really true, yes. And then also that um, we can sort of tell if a, if a competitor built a program just to compete, but yeah. it really mm. should show really the real personality. That's what we are looking for. So it's not just a time filler or, you know, that sort of thing. We, the competitors should be very careful, I think. So yeah. when you just see, on, there's a big screen at the back of the hall, and you see the program, um, if it's really well constructed, do you know immediately those pieces fit together really well, or that's more just a program to compete? Well, um, I think we feel it when the program starts and then when a pianist is playing, and then mm. the, the names, just uh, just the, the titles of the pieces do not always give us a, a whole idea. Yeah. You know, it is the, as a concert, suddenly it makes sense sometimes, or sometimes it works vice versa. Do you plan your programs thematically? When For you concerts? perform, no, yeah. When you perform, well, well, <laughs> <laughs> what a good, well, yes, yes, yes. We always have to think because right. concerts cannot go on for five hours or. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we have to we have to know how long each piece is and then how mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yes, yeah. It's mm. a very it's a very good discipline. This actually the, the the timing issue because you know if you think of what you're working and being asked to play for a broadcast mm. and you know. It, uh, in the days when one did lots of live broadcasts, you know, this it's uh, in terms of, of uh, radio broadcasts I'm talking about, not mm -hmm. not not for <laughs> streaming. Yeah. But but you know, you would always have to wait for the news and uh, or be in time for the news. And if you ran too late, they'd just cut you off. So, right. You know, these things are very important actually. So these are practical matters as well as artistic matters. Uh, speaking of getting just cut off, I was talking yesterday with Veda Kaplinsky, and she said, you know, in the old days of competitions, they would ring a bell mm -hmm. if you went over time. Mm -hmm. Do you like it that? Here, the competitors are given the chance to go even a bit over the allotted time and really make a statement. Um, it's up to us if we if we want to uh, stop them. Uh -huh. and it's a jury discretion. And you haven't yet. I haven't seen it no, happen. Not yet. That's great. No. Some competitions, some competitions ring a bell. Really? Oh yes. Mm. Still? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, when, and when you were competing as a younger pianist, did you ever have that happen to you? Uh, I can't remember it happening to me, but <laughs> I remember to me. it happening. Yeah. <laughs> Not to me, but yeah. 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 It, it does happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does happen. And when you're uh, listening to competitors and they're giving their first performance, uh, as in the first piece of the program, how quickly these days, because you're so experienced, how quickly can you summarize, okay, this is a pianist of great lyricism, or this is a, fire, a firecracker, or the type of pianist you're hearing, how quickly can you judge that? Not always apparent from the beginning. I mean, some, mm. most of the time you can tell that somebody that is drawing you in. For mm -hmm. me, and the way I'm, I, I don't know how Norika feels about this, but certainly for me, I could sometimes think, yes, immediately they walk on stage, yes, this person has something about them, has an aura, sits mm. down, has plays right from the first note, but sometimes not always. You, you mm -hmm. get drawn in gradually sometimes. Yeah. So you, you have to be alert the whole way through the program because if you switch off after the first piece, you've, you've um, sometimes missed something. Right. So you have to really concentrate the whole time as a juror. Do you agree? Uh, oh, yes, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, you, 
it, it just changes by you know from piece to piece. Mm -hmm. So we have to listen until the very last note is right. you know the pedal off. Until then, we we really have to listen. Another thing I was talking about with Veda yesterday that I'd like to know your thoughts on. Uh, when the public watches competitions and they're watching from home and uh, they sometimes stop listening and they go get a snack or they're reading something, it's very different uh, than listening in a focused way, doing nothing else uh, as a jury member. And yet sometimes the competition results are exasperating for certain viewers. They don't see their favorite pianist in the, among the finalists. Um, how do you feel when you're watching competitors at a highly consequential competition about the responsibility you have? Well, it is a big responsibility, of course, but then, you know, we are supposed to be here as kind of experts. So <laughs> we might not, you know, we might be looking at some things which we know a little bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. For example, um, I can be quite fussy about Mm, well, for example, dynamics of fingering or things like that, the particular markings that are, you know, we should really take great care of. That right. sort of thing that uh, um, you might miss it if you're reading a book. Mm -hmm. So um, those things that uh, should be in consideration when it comes to competitions, that, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And of course the projection as mm. well of the sound is, is over, over the internet, I said in the other interview we had the other day about how this different impression mm -hmm. in the hall from on the internet, but it, you can... The sound quality mm. you can really tell in the hall, and you can yeah. you can feel the differences. Of course, you judged online uh, over the course of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. What what do you get that's different between watching competitors live versus on a screen through recordings? Hmm. Well, um, real acoustic and the real projection. But mm. when I listen to uh, competitions online, I actually drew the curtains and then I put headphones and I really created um, a kind of concert hall atmosphere in my room wow. and then I shut everything and uh, so I, I tried to create some sort of um, atmosphere as close as possible for, for live concerts. Mm -hmm. So um, it is different from just watching something at randomly, you know. When, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's because I thought it was a great responsibility, in a way harder. Yeah. Really? Mm. How was it harder? Um, some well, we were told that we could only watch it once. Just like in a regular Ooh, yeah, competition, yeah, you can't once. go back over it, right? That's right, mm -hmm. yeah, only once. So, um, yeah, did a lot of pressure. And then also yeah. that uh, very, very careful, very careful about all these things. And then, mm -hmm. of course, in your home and then curtains drawn and a dark room, mm -hmm. it is very comfortable. So I really had to concentrate. I really had to tell myself mm -hmm. that, yes, I am going to. So I had a quite firm time schedule because it takes you know, like here, you know, we are listening all day. Yeah. So, so you know, at home even, you know, the online competitions, it takes just as long as. So oh, yeah. I can't say, oh, I'm going to finish in one day. No, it actually takes weeks. So mm. I had a kind of, you know, proper time schedule and then I mm -hmm. made sure that I, I, I ate properly and then I rested properly right. so that I do not not offer anything like that because I only had one chance to listen to you. Yeah. So. It's interesting you mm. say that because mm. I've judged a competition in China actually mm. when we, we've actually been on live with with them and of course we only have one chance because it's live and that's very scary because you god forbid the wi-fi works properly or oh, something wow, you know? yes, true. you're watching live and there are several jurors on they make sure they get they get you on live first the mm -hmm. jurors they put the jurors up on the screen in china mm -hmm. and you're all on the screen the whole time mm -hmm. watching oh ah, yes that's right so you do you like you i had to you know make sure that i was Concentrating, so that was another experience, completely different from even watching a recording, mm -hmm. because you're actually there live, mm. looking at them. Now, with all due respect to and deference to competitions that uh, adapted to the pandemic beautifully, is it still it's the most preferable to be live, right, and to be in the concert hall and hear it all, right in front of you? With that yes. question, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's that's the that's what we're there for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. we're there for mu live music making. Yeah. So of course, some of the competitors, if not all of them, are you know eagerly awaiting the results, and they're you know there's probably a pit in their stomach, or some of them are anxious and nervous and so on. Um, do you remember that feeling when you were competing? Very much. Oh, <laughs> very, very much. Very much. What was it like for you when you were waiting for the results oh, to be Oh, well, I, I experienced every stage, you know. Yes. <laughs> Past just one round or prize winner or halfway through or nothing happened. or I experienced everything. So, yes, I can just feel so much for them. Mm -hmm. oh.
Mm. What about you? Oh, the same, exactly yeah. the same. And, and this, this feeling of sitting there waiting, this anticipation and how you feel a little bit sick inside. In, in when I was doing competitions, we had to actually be there for the result these days. You can actually watch it online, so you don't right. necessarily... You, If you prefer to be in your own little cocoon listening mm. without anybody looking at you, mm. that's up to you. But um, And, of course, some of the competitors will come today to listen to the result, and I think they're very brave, actually, to mm. sit there with other yeah. people and and to, to find out the results that way. So, it's just, you know, there are other mm. options now, but in, in when I was certainly doing competitions, it was, you know, you had to sit there. and In fact, they lined you up in yes. your... In your yes. Order. Yes, <laughs> I could stand up. <laughs> I could always hear my heartbeat. Yes, really. <laughs> yes, I could hear. My and I, I'm particularly uh, right now remembering there's a video from the Leeds competition. Of course, we all know when they're announcing the prize winners. What were you feeling while you sat there waiting to hear? <laughs> oh well, it's just heart. Yeah, you could hear your heart. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. that's all I can say. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Sometimes I knew um, if I played not very well, then I knew. Mm. that my name was not going to be mentioned. But uh, mm. when I thought maybe, maybe I could just get in, then, you know, my heartbeat was very, very fast. And how did you feel after they called your name at the Leeds and you had a prize? Oh, when I had a prize? Yeah. How did you feel when, well, when your name was called? just over the moon. Yeah? Just, yeah, 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 just over the moon. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now, these competitors are, of course, as they advance through the competition, they're getting a, a concerto thrown at them, a commissioned piece, and their ambition to maybe get a prize is starting to become... Mm -hmm. Well, this could really happen. Mm. Um, so their playing has to reach higher levels, right, in yeah. order to make the finals. What changes between the beginning stages of a competition and then where you're going to have to make a cutoff point as a jury of who gets into the semis and who gets into the finals? Well, it's very interesting, actually, especially with a long competition like this, with a lot of repertoire that they have to prepare, mm. is very, very often the people that succeed are the people that get stronger as they go through. Right. Because they're, they're so very well prepared, especially for their semi-finals and their finals, that they, they lift because inevitably people are getting tired. And by the time they come in this competition, there's a third round, they've still got another very big recital to play as well as a Mozart concerto. Mm -hmm. They've already given a lot of themselves in the first two rounds. So if you have the stamina and the strength, and it's not all about just playing the piano it's about whether you're eating well sleeping well enjoying yourself too much or not enough or, right. or you know all these kind of things that there are other external factors that go on when you're in a place like some, uh, somewhere that you're not used to studying in or being mm -hmm. in or uh, living in um and therefore you're you're there you are and you have to uh, produce and get stronger and that's one of the hardest things so it inevitably the people who who stay with it and 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 get stronger that do well would you agree? I agree every word of it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, something that makes sense. I'm, I'm sure for viewers also watching it who aren't on the jury and are mm -hmm. just you know very interested in competitions, uh, I'm sure a penny just dropped for a lot of viewers that yeah that makes sense. You know you have to get better mm -hmm. as you go. But how do you get better? For some people watching this, the first stage is already astonishing because mm -hmm. they're young and they're talented. How do you define what better is? Well, it's preparation, isn't it? And it's being right. prepared for. Some people might not be quite so prepared for the later stages because they put so much energy and effort into right. the first stage. Mm -hmm. And then they think, oh, maybe I didn't learn this piece so quite so well. Or oh, I didn't know it so well. <laughs> Help, you know, I have to yeah, say. I didn't there. expect to be there. I didn't expect mm. to be there. That's dangerous. Yes, mm. absolutely. Mm. And I heard uh, walking through the halls today after, uh, the, I think it was, there was a break before the last recital, I heard people playing Mozart concertos. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, because at some competitions I entered with a concerto in the final, my teacher advised me to begin by practicing the concerto. And the first mm -hmm. day I was there, just to keep in my mind, mm -hmm. I intend to go further than mm -hmm. the beginning of this competition. Uh, and it, I don't know if that was sort of a magic formula. I've heard Adele Marcus used it with her students as well. Always start by practicing what you're going to play in the upper stages of the competition. That's very good psychological. Do, do you think that's a good yeah, idea? Yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Um, mm. So... Uh, we're all waiting for the uh, results to come out. Uh, are you also getting tired? <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that I didn't know when I was a competitor. I thought that all the jury members, they sit back and relax and they listen to music all day. I did not know how agonizing this could be. It's very painful because mm. those wow. young pianists' lives are in some ways mm. in our hands. I mean, mm. what kind of responsibility is that? It's so heavy. It's so vital. It is, mm. And then each one of them is giving so much to us. I mean, energy that we receive. Mm. And we are not 
allowed to say anything. So Vanessa and I have been, we are both, you know, a couple of chat box, you know, so we, we've been chatting, chatting, but we cannot talk about certain things. We must cats. not. Yeah, we're talking about cats and yeah, we're talking about our families and, mm -hmm. you know, the meals and things like that. But we cannot talk about the important things. Why? Well, because it you know it can influence you in the wrong way. You can you can have somebody else. You think you think you're down going down your track, and then you talk to somebody else and you think, oh, maybe I should have thought that person was. It. You have to mm. keep completely single-minded, yeah. and then usually if you trust yourself and you you know what you like, mm -hmm. then the result is 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 good because yeah. everybody's really trusting themselves. Whereas if you're slightly deviating because somebody else is saying, oh no. Of course, in an, in other competitions, not this one. But in this one, we're not allowed to have any of our own personal students. Yeah, we have to sign a paper which says we do not have personal students mm -hmm. in the competition. Right, mm. ones that we teach ourselves. Yes. Um. So, and we've all done that, and that also helps a lot because mm. you're yeah. you're completely objective. You don't you don't have any any sort of you don't come with any baggage about about behind you. Mm. But um, in some competitions, there, in some juries where there's not this strict rule about no discussions, then you know there are people who are kind of working, you know, in this way. But most right. people are very professional. I mean, in most competitions, you'll find jurors who are very experienced, mm -hmm. who really don't, um, they really believe in what they're listening to, and they're very yeah. tough on 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 themselves mm -hmm. as well as. So listening, they're very delighted to be able to listen to. I'd like okay. to underscore something mm. that you just said and something that you said in our last interview. Mm. You said what an incredible responsibility mm. knowing that their career and their lives are in our hands. And you said to me three days ago, don't think that jurors don't cry. Mm -hmm. Very privately and discreetly, but it might be that they are so moved that they can't help it. Mm. This shows such an incredible humanity on the side of the jury that competitions in general have a reputation, right, that uh, among music students that, mm -hmm. you know, the jury may have some personal investment in someone winning or promoting their students, but you're sharing a totally different view of what goes on. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's it's very, really, we're honest and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it, sometimes this perception can be because maybe you didn't play so well, so you have to think of something to blame because, it, right. you know, maybe you're not comfortable in your own performance and mm -hmm. therefore somebody else's fault it's easy to blame someone else but uh, mm -hmm. no I think it's it's as much as my experience I have and certainly all the juries I'm sitting yeah. on we're very it's very straightforward and very honest is every competition different I think so yes every mm -hmm. competition is different but I'd like all the competitors and all the listeners to know that we are also musicians we are all very emotional people mm -hmm. so it you know every note and every concert, every performance goes right into our heart. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, this exhaustion you're describing and the heaviness of it all is because you are doing your job. You're sitting there listening and you're really giving everybody a chance. And you're, in a way, opening yourself mm. to how they're playing. And you don't know them. They're not your students. Mm. You haven't worked with them. So this is like meeting a total stranger who's going to confide very deep mm. things from within themselves in you and hope that you're hearing them. So that must be an incredible, but also tiring <laughs> situation. Well, the concentration. Yeah. It's the concentration and it's the constant, you know, the one after the other, one after the other one. And each one, each person you have to be fresh for. Each person you have to sit up, listen, mm -hmm. and be alert for. And you have to be just as alert for the last one as you are for the first one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Well, I'm thrilled to hear all these things from you, and I'm sure you're probably at this point, your concentration may be a little bit spent, given that we've been listening for a few days. You're not. No. Does it give you energy? Some teachers I worked with who are also very experienced judges say at the end of a round, they actually find themselves surprisingly not tired. Absolutely, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And for you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> also not so tired? or. Mm. So sometimes I am tired, or yeah. you know, keep, you know, keeps me, you know, that sometimes my mind keeps, yeah, going, and then yeah, I mm -hmm. keep thinking, oh, oh, what did I hear? I what did I listen? Yes, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. My mind could be racing sometimes. Yes. And of course, uh, last point for you, Noriko, you've been to Bidgosh before to teach at the Paderewski Piano Academy in the summer for concertos. As we go toward the concerto rounds, how important is it in your experience that the competitors have already worked with orchestras before? Mm, I think it is important, but then I have heard some 
prize winners in the past that they had never played with orchestras. And that can really? also, yes, yes, and it can be really fresh and then very refreshing and then hmm. really sparkly. So, wow. of course, it is nice to have a lot of experience, but it's not the most important thing, I think. Mm. What some is? some musicians <laughs> some musicians just know instinctively they they connect with conductors and orchestras mm -hmm. so so we we shall see we shall see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and it's really how you adapt on the day to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're looking forward to hearing the next stage, the yeah. concerto. Very much. Yeah. Going to add something new to the repertoire yes. and in a bigger venue. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would be very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noriko. Thank, Thank you, Vanessa. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, tomorrow, we actually have a day off the competition studio, but we'll be back on November the 15th uh, during the semifinals. We'll see you then. The 12th International Paderewski Piano Competition in Bydgoszcz. Live broadcast at www.paderewskicompetition.pl Są takie chwile w życiu, które zostają w pamięci. Gdy dźwięki otaczają nas z każdej strony, muzyka przytula.
Najważniejsze, by ten czas spędzać z kimś, kogo kochamy, lubimy, szanujemy. W miejscu, które jest dla nas czymś ważnym, do którego zawsze chcemy wracać. Harmonia Pomorska. Daj się przytulić muzyce. Możesz budować formy na siłowni i grać niesamowite solówki. Możesz oddać się pasji gotowania i miksować ścieżki. Możesz pielęgnować swoje rośliny i trygować chórem. Możesz uwieczniać piękne momenty i występować na wielkich scenach. W Akademii Muzycznej w Bydgoszczy stawiamy na Twoją swobodę i rozwój. Dlatego dołącz do nas i poczuj, że naprawdę możesz.
Bydgoszcz, the capital and the largest city of the Kujawian Pomeranian region. It is a city of two rivers, the Vistula, the Bruda and the historic Bydgoszcz Canal. Picturesquely located between forests, it was associated with water from the very beginning. Water is one of the city's elements, and the old granaries standing by the Bruda River tell about its past and identity of its inhabitants. A remarkable object on the map of Bydgoszcz is the 18th century Bydgoszcz Canal. It contributed to a rapid development of trade and industry, and it associated its residents with the traditions of the skippers and inland navigation forever. The canal, along with the Vistula and Bruda River, is a part of the international E-17 waterway connecting Western Europe with the historic Krulewiec. The revitalized Roder's Mills on the Mill Island have become a place of cultural gatherings and concerts. The Mill Island itself is a vibrant heart of the city that offers world-class entertainment, not only in Opera Nova, but also in a picturesque natural setting on the stage built on the Bruda embankment. The city can be explored by boats or by a solar boat. From the water level, we can see even more clearly how the past connects with the present and modernity. The living museum created on the renovated Lemara barge tells about the traditions of skippers. From the marina of Bydgoszcz, we can set out in a canoe on a river journey around the city. The monuments of hydraulic engineering can be visited from the picturesque bicycle paths. And in the evening, you can rest in one of the multiple restaurants located by the Młynówka River. Come. See. Feel it. Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Grand Piano. Grand Piano. 